Good day, YouTube. It's Brett here from Overtime Game with you once again. I hope all is good and welcome back with some FIFA 13 Connected Career Mode with, of course, Newcastle United, the mighty Magpies. We have a Premier League game today, guys, and we're looking to get redemption from our loss against Southampton and pick up a win here away from home at Swansea. Definitely a hard game for us. Swansea are a very talented side. So they come out there. One good thing for us, they haven't got Michael Vorm in goal anymore. As I said earlier on in the season, he was transferred to Chelsea as their backup keeper, which I think is a very poor move for him, as seen as they've still got Czech in goal. And uh, he is literally just a backup goalkeeper there now. But hey, it definitely improves stuff for us. And uh, you'll see here, guys, um, this is going to be a very difficult game. In a minute, we'll see the lineups. But as I was saying, they've got a strong squad at Swansea now. And uh, obviously, Scott McBeanie is the match official again, as usual. You can see there, Pogba is back for us again, guys. And uh, we're eighth at the moment with a game in hand over the team above us, Fulham. So a win here will put us above them and put us in seventh, which is definitely a position we need to get. As you can see, they've still got Jonathan de Guzman and Nathan Dyer. Wayne Routledge playing up front for them today, which is very strange in all honesty. Of course, Routledge, former Newcastle player. Um, playing on left wing, not up front, my bad. Donnelly is actually up front for them today. And we look at our starting eleven. Um, it is our strongest side we're putting out today. And uh, obviously with Niang at front, Menes at left mid, Ben Arthur at right mid, Sissoko and Kabai at central attack mids with Pogba at centre defence. Defensive midfield, sorry. So we're definitely putting out a strong side. And we'll want to get the upper hand on Swansea very early here. They are a good passing side, especially on this game. They're extremely good at passing the ball around the defence. And our defence has been weak the last few games. So we definitely need to get to grips and tackle quickly. And this isn't the start we've wanted. But Rufia should come out and claim it. But he doesn't. Jonathan de Guzman in the fourth minute. Just as I was saying, we need to defend well. The just Swansea team just pass it around the defence. The defence failed to make a tackle. De Guzman creates space for himself. And Ruffier can't get out quick enough to claim this ball as we look again. And uh, he just can't get down quick enough. And De Guzman sneaks it underneath him and puts it into the corner. And all of a sudden, Newcastle have to go on the offensive very quickly now, guys. And Because uh, we're down 1-0. That's definitely not the start we've wanted. But we'll get into what happened last night in the real, pre real Premier League now, guys. Obviously, there were three games in the Premier League last night. And that was Man City Wigan, West Ham Man United and Fulham Chelsea. Now, I didn't watch any of these guys. I was actually watching baseball. So, um, forgive me for if I, I can't say if they were good games or not. Because, obviously, I did not see them. But, I have seen the score. So, we'll speak about that. Obviously, the first game... Well, two games kicked off at once. And that was Man City versus Wigan and West Ham Man United. So, both Ma Manchester sides playing today, guys. Man City were at home. Man United were away. Man City picked up a 1-0 win against Wigan. Definitely a good result for Newcastle fans and any team that's near the relegation zone. And, oh, we get very lucky there. Donnelly should have put that into the bottom corner. How did he miss that? Oof. Again, we just let the ball get passed around us. But as I was saying, guys, Man City won 1-0. Um, I'm not sure who scored, but it's a great result for Newcastle and teams near the relegation zone because it means that now Wigan only have one game in hand over the teams above them. And um, they they can't catch up with Newcastle now, so that's definitely a good thing for us. And uh, they can't catch up with a couple of teams in front of them on just that one game. So they're still in a very dangerous position. And I'm still putting out there, Wigan will be um, relegated this year. QPR, Wigan and Reading will be decided relegated this year. And uh, that's just my opinion. Who do you guys think will go down? And... Um, Obviously, the second game, who, which also kicked off at the same time, which was 7.45, was West Ham Man United. Now, I've obviously seen the reports of um, Fergie complaining about the referee, but I've also seen reports of one of their goals being offside, I believe. So, um, in my opinion, as I've said before, Ferguson cannot complain about any sort of referee. Uh, Man United have been given more than their fair share of dodgy decisions for them. So, Ferguson should just keep his mouth shut in this situation um, because it will just turn more and more people against him. A lot of people already dislike him and comments like that are reasons why. Now, I think he's an absolutely brilliant manager, don't get me wrong. I just think he's arrogant and uh, thinks everybody owes him something, um, which they definitely don't. I understand what he's done for Man United, but he hasn't done anything else for any other club, so why should anybody else like him? And uh, I think he should live live to the rules of the game like every other manager and deal with situations that occur in a game so I just feel he needs to shut up <laughs> but 
But they did draw two all, guys. I'm not sure who scored the goals again. I um, was, I did see a, a little bit of it when it was one all, and I uh, was surprised that it was one all. And then I obviously Vazte scored for West Ham, I believe. And uh, both times West Ham went up, and then Man United came back. So um, West Ham will probably feel disappointed with the result. In all honesty. Um, definitely would have been good for them to pick up a win because now they're in slight bit of trouble if the teams below them pick up wins um, at the weekend and West Ham don't. So um, they've put themselves in a slight bit of um, a bad position but then again they didn't lose so they do still get a point out of it. Now the final game which kicked off at 8 rather than quarter to 8 was Fulham-Chelsea guys and um, Chelsea demolished Fulham 3-0. Now I know I said I expected Fulham to actually win 1-0 or 2-1 and I am completely shocked by that, guys. I mean, 3-0. And John Terry scored two goals, I believe. Um, and David Luiz scored the third. Um, well, the first, I actually believe he scored. Um, but that's just insane. Two defenders scoring three goals. But not just that. Chelsea scoring three goals in the Premier League. They've been in awful form. And I definitely did not see that happening against a decent side like Fulham. That shocks me so much. But we'll leave that at that. Obviously, what to, leave your guys' take on it in the comments below. I want to know what you thought of all the games. But as you can see, we went into halftime 1-0 down against Swansea here. Not quite sure how we were 1-0 down. We did play some good football and definitely should have scored. But we're still getting taken apart by the Swansea passing game, in all honesty. But hopefully hit them with a quick attack here and get a goal back very quickly. And... Uh, Kabai's going to try that. He plays it back out to Ben Arthur. He's going to cut in and obviously try and shoot. But he just gets tackled at the last minute. And it just doesn't pull off for Ben Arthur today. He hasn't looked in the greatest form today. So he may need to be switched out in a moment. But Swansea hitting us with the counter-attack here. Donnelly just taking it past. Luckily we make the tackle. davushi has been solid at the back for us today. So that's definitely a good reason to keep him in the side. Now, obviously for Newcastle fans, this has been some very bad news this week. Obviously, not just the results that have occurred, but also because of injury concerns. Obviously, right now, Kulacini still out injured. Krull had only just come back from an injury. And in the game at the weekend against Sunderland, he went to make a save. Fell over, basically, and um, dislocated his shoulder. And unfortunately, that's him out for the season. Uh, there's only around, I think there's six games left. So, it's not that long, in all honesty. But... He is still out for the season, which means we're going to have to put either Steve Harper or Rob Elliott in goal. And I don't trust either of them in the Premier League. Both are good championship keepers, but are not up to standard for the Premier League. They're just not good enough and are definitely going to put us in a bad position. As Swansea hits with another attack and De Guzman just with a beautiful touch to beat Sacco. And uh, there was nothing we could do there. We couldn't get the tackle straight away. And Sacco slid in and De Guzman just little touch behind his legs and just scores there. It was a beautiful finish. And all of a sudden we're down 2-0. This is just getting a heartbreaking game for us. Came into this game so excited and just nothing's paying off. So if you can see there we're making tackles and it's just not going right. We're making passes and not quite falling to the right person. It's just not going well. Lucas Dye makes a beautiful challenge there and we're trying to hit him with a counter attack here. We have put Guzman on. Guthrie on, sorry. And uh, Menez gets pushed off the ball. He's just not strong enough in that position. And he's definitely got to get better there. And it's just not paying off. Sissoko with a poor effort in all honesty. But we do get the corner from it. But as I was saying, calls out for the season. And uh, I feel very nervous because we're in a much worse spot with Harper and Elliot in goal. I really wish we'd kept hold of Fraser Forster. Because I would have been so much more comfortable with Fraser Forster coming into goal in a situation like this than rather Rob Elliott. Rob Elliott's not a very good keeper at all. Um, I think we'll definitely look for a replacement for him in the summer. If if they don't, they definitely should look into it. Um, but alongside that, there's more bad news for the Newcastle camp. Ryan Taylor, who has obviously been out since August, um, was training in his rehab. Um, looked like he was about to make a return. And unfortunately, tore his ACL in training. And uh, it's 3 0. Oh, good save by Ruffy. Yeah, oh, very lucky there, guys. But unfortunately, Ryan Taylor tore his ACL in training and is now out for at least midway through next season, if not the whole of next season. And uh, I hate to say it, but he's 28 years old, guys. And I believe he turns 29 very soon. So by the time he comes back, he's going to be 30. So 
in my opinion, his career as a Premier League player is now over. I don't think his body will return physically. Um, he won't be able to cope with the physical demands that the Premier League wants. And uh, he just won't be able to be the presence he once was. And uh, he also won't have the confidence in his body because of the injury concerns. And I don't think Newcastle are going to have the confidence in him either. So in my opinion, when he comes back, he will be sold. And if he's not sold, I think he will retire because his career is now over. And uh, there's nothing he's going to be able to do now, guys. And I really hate to say it because I really like Ryan Taylor. Um, he's a very good player. I wouldn't say he's a starting player, but he's a very good um, back defensive backup. And Goufron with an absolutely gorgeous finish there. That's what he's been fantastic at the last few games, guys. As I've been saying, he's been coming off the bench and been supplying us with vital goals. And he scores another one there in the 82nd minute. And all of a sudden, we're back into this, guys. And if we can hit them with a quick attack here, obviously I'm only playing a four minute half, so it's around a minute left in real time. Um, so we've definitely got to be quick at attacking them now, guys. But hopefully we can. But as I was saying, my condolences go out to Ryan Taylor. I'm um, hoping he can make a quicker recovery than has actually been stated. But unfortunately, I think it's over for him, guys. Let me know what you think on the situation. And uh, remember to keep your comments rolling in, guys, because we need them for the comment of the week. We have had quite a few comments this week, but still none that I've really wanted to include. However, I may just be saying that just to keep you commenting. Comments in. So definitely get your comments in, guys. It's obviously Thursday today, so a couple of days left. Obviously, comment of the week will come out Saturday. So um, definitely get your comments out, and uh, we'll definitely, definitely have a good comment of the week this week. So get them coming in. But we're hitting them with the attack in the last minute here. Guthron couldn't make space. He tries challenging for the ball, but unfortunately just gets beat out there. And it is the end of the game, guys, and we suffer a second defeat on the trot. It's definitely not how we wanted to head into our Europa League game against Bordeaux. Menez had a decent game. He, he had one of his more lively games for us. But unfortunately, we just couldn't pull it off. And it's not the result we wanted. And uh, we're definitely going to have some fire in our belly for the next game after two poor losses. Marvu complaining there. He's another player we're going to sell at the end of the season. But as you can see, we've got Bordeaux in the next episode, guys, in the first leg of the Europa League. And then we've got a game against Wigan before we play Bordeaux again. So that'll be in the next episode, guys. And uh, remember to comment, leave a like, subscribe. Check out all the stuff in the description, guys. Share the video and peace out, YouTube. We're heading into overtime.